Hello, welcome to Math 8. Uh, this is a video uh, for Section 1, uh, and we're going to be starting uh, Unit 4, uh, which is about linear equations, okay? And what we're going to be doing is solving equations uh, in this unit and looking at the different types of things we can do um, and the different types of solutions that we get. So uh, the first thing we do uh, that I want to talk about are the properties of equality. And we have four of them. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay. Now, um, we often talk about this concept of inverse operations, and, and or operations that undo each other. Okay, uh, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. And what I want to talk about real quick is the fact that um, I want to talk about opposite operations. Okay. So opposite operations. Okay. And uh, the main ones that we're going to be talking about uh, right now, uh, these will get more complicated as we go. But, um, you know, opposite operations, the opposite of addition would be subtraction. Okay. The opposite of multiplication would be division. Okay. And so these go hand in hand. All right, so the opposite of you know, addition is subtraction. The opposite of subtraction is addition. So um, that's how we get that. All right, so now what I want to do is talk about these properties of equality. Okay, and so when I talk about the addition property of equality, what this means is that we add a number to both sides. Okay, so that means, and let's write that down, that we add a number to both sides of an equation. Okay, so that's what we got. All right, so now let's, let's see why this works, okay? Uh, you know, we have this property here um, that a plus b is equal to b plus c, but let's, let's kind of dive into this a little bit. Let's talk about a true statement, okay? Let me write an equation that says like three is equal to three. And that's a true statement. 3 is equal to 3. Now, if I add something to, say, the left side of the equation, let's say if I add 2 to the left side, if I'm doing the, uh, the addition property of equality, I would also have to add that value to the right side. Okay, And what that would give me is another true statement in that 5 is equal to 5. Okay, And the same thing works you know, for subtraction. Okay. Let's say I have 3 equals 3. Let's say I subtract 2 from each side. All right. And so then I get 3 minus 2 is 1 is equal to 3 minus 2 is 1. And that's still a true statement. Okay. Same thing with multiplication property of equality. Um, you know, let's say I have 3 equals 3. All right. Um, you know, if I multiply both sides by, say, 2, okay, then I'm going to get that 6 is equal to 6. Okay. We still get a true statement. Okay, same thing with division property. Let's do a, a different one. Let's do uh, 4 is equal to 4. Okay, and let's say that we divide each side by 2. Okay, and then we get the statement that 2 equals 2. Okay, so these are, that's what we're doing to both sides. Okay, so if you do, you know, something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other so that the equation stays balanced. Okay, so subtraction property of equality, let's write this down that this is when you subtract a number from both sides okay when you uh, the multiplication property of equality means that you multiply whoops multiply a number from or to both sides multiply number to both sides Okay, and then division property of equality means that we divide a number from both sides. Okay, and so uh, that's what we're doing. So what I want to do is solve some of these equations, okay? And what we're doing is... And what we're, what we're doing is this. Uh, let's talk about, let's think of an example here real quick. Okay. So let's write an example down over on the right side of your page. And what I want to do is, is say this, that x plus 3 
is equal to 7. Okay, And I want you to think about something simple like this. And what this means is that some number, you take some number, you add 3, and you get 7. And the question is, what's that number? Now, if you just think about it and you say, okay, some number, you add 3 to it, you get 7. Well, that number would just be 4. Okay, x is equal to 4. But what you want to do, because these problems are, are, you know, this one you can, this is an example of a problem that you could do just in your head by thinking about it. But you also have to sit back and say, okay, how could I use algebra to do this? Okay, and what I want you to notice is that you're taking some number and you're adding 3. What, would, what could we do to undo adding 3? What is the opposite of adding 3? And the opposite would be subtracting 3. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, okay, which is what we would want to do, because if I'm going to subtract 3 from the left side of the equation, I have to do it to the right side of the equation, all right, then we do the, then we do the math, okay? And I do this, and I do, what's 3 minus 3? Well, that's just 0. So then you get x plus 0 is equal to 7 minus 3. Do that part, which is going to be 4. Now, x plus 0, take some number, you add it to 0, you're going to keep that same number. So you just have x is equal to 4, okay? So there is, you know, a way to just think about it. However, problems do get a little bit more complicated, and we're not able to do them in our head. So there is a way to do them... Um, you know, not in our heads, to do them on paper so that we can show the math and do a logical steps to arrive at what x is, okay? And that's what we're going to do over here. So we wanted to talk about, you know, what these properties are, okay, and to see, you know, how they work. But let's go ahead and let's solve these equations uh, that we have here uh, to help, okay? And we'll probably need a little, a the help of a calculator with some of these, um, but let's just go ahead and jump right into this, all right? So let's solve this equation. Now, I have the equation x minus 4.3 is equal to 0.55, okay? Um, and so what I want to do is, is solve this for x, okay? Now, I, what I, my goal is to isolate my x value. Now, in order to do that, I have to move this negative 4.3 to the other side. Now, if I'm subtracting 4.3... Okay, what's the opposite of subtracting 4.3? And that would simply just be adding 4.3 to both sides. Okay, and so here's what I get. Uh, negative 4.3 uh, plus 4.3, that adds to 0, so that's just going to cancel out. So then I have x is equal to 0.55, all right, let me get my calculator out, uh, 0.55, times plus 4.3. So 0.55 plus 4.3. And that's going to give me a value of x is equal to 4.85. Okay, now that's what we get by doing our math. Now there is a way to check to determine if we are correct. Okay, and that's something that I want us to do. All right, so uh, we want to check or verify that we have the right answer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value for x, and I'm going to plug it back in, so take 4.85 and plug it in for x, okay? So I'm going to do 4.85, plug that in for x, and then I'm going to subtract 4.3, and we're going to see if we do end up getting 0.55 as a result. So if I do the math between take 4.85 and subtract 4.3, Okay, that does give me 0.55, okay, is equal to 0.55. Now, because this is equal to that, that's a true statement. Therefore, that is the right answer, okay, and that's all we're doing. All right, and so that's what we got, okay? Uh, let's talk about this next one. Solve this equation. Uh, X plus two-fifths is equal to eight, all right. Now, same thing here. Okay, x plus two fifths is equal to eight. That's just like you know what we had done on the previous problem, except for we're dealing with a fraction. Okay, so be you know if I'm adding two fifths to both sides, what would be the opposite of adding two fifths to both sides? And that would be subtracting two fifths from both sides. Okay, and so here's what we get. I'm going to get that x is equal to eight over one minus 
two-fifths. Now, in order for me to add fractions together or subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator. In this case, I have a 1 and I have a 5. Okay, and I want to turn the 1 into a 5 by using multiplication. So what I'm going to do is this. All right, I'm going to take the top and bottom and I'm going to multiply both of them by 5. Okay, and so what I'm going to get <clears throat> is this. I'm going to get um, that x is equal to 8 times 5 is 40 over 1 times 5, which is 5, okay, minus 2 over 5. Now, at this point, what I want to do is add my numerators and keep my denominators. So I'm going to do 40 minus 2 all divided by 5. 40 minus 2 is going to give me 38, so 38 fifths. Okay, and that's my answer. Okay, and that's what we got algebraically. Now, let's check to see if we're right. All right, so if we check this, all right, we're going to get um, 38 fifths, okay, plus 2 fifths. Is that equal to 8? Okay, does that give us a value of 8? So 30, and so because I have a common denominator already, all right, I'm going to do 38 plus 2 all over 5. Does that give me 8? Now, 38 plus 2 gives me 40, okay, over 5. And is that equal to 8? 40 divided by 5 is 8. 8 equals 8, that is true, therefore this is correct, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Now this one, um, I've got x divided by 3 is equal to 6, okay? And typically how I'd write that is x over 3 is equal to 6, okay? And what I want to do is think about this, and I want to say, okay, some number divided by 3 gives me 6, okay? How do I move this 3 to the other side? What do I need to do? If I'm dividing by 3, then I'd want to multiply, let's change colors, both sides by 3. Okay? Now here's what I get. I get 3 times x divided by 3 is equal to 6 times 3. Now when I look at this, when I take 3 divided by 3, okay, 3 divided by 3 is really just 1. So I have 1 times x, and that's equal to 6 times 3, which is 18. Okay, now 1 times x, all right, that's just going to be x. 1 times any number is that number, so x is equal to 18. And so we're isolating that variable, all right? Now let's go ahead and check this, okay? So I'm going to check, all right? And I'm just going to plug my value for x back into my original equation. And I'm going to do 18 divided by 3, is that equal to 6? 18 divided by 3 is 6, and 6 is equal to 6. That's true, so therefore that is correct. Okay, all right, um, we're going to solve this equation. 5.5 times x is equal to 33. Now, notice here that when we have 5.5x, okay, that, that the numbers are just, the number is next to my variable. That indicates that we are multiplying. So the opposite of multiplying by 5.5 would be dividing both sides by 5.5, okay, and divide by 5.5. Now, 5.5 divided by 5.5 over here on the left side, this divides out to 1. You're left with 1 times x is equal to 33 divided by 5.5. Now, 1 times x is just simply going to give us x, okay? Now, if I take 33 and divide that by 5.5, all right, that gives me a value of 6. Okay, and so x is equal to 6. Now let's check, and let's see if we're right. All right, so we can plug it back in to check. So I'm going to do 5.5 times the value of 6, and does that give me a value of 33? All right, and 5.5 times 6, so 5.5 times 6 does in fact give me 33. 33 is equal to 33. We have ourselves a true statement, therefore this is correct. All right, and that's what we've got. Okay, so that's how we do those problems, okay? Um, things you've probably already seen, but it's important that we understand, you know, how we use these opposite operations or these inverse operations to help us solve equations, okay? Now, the last one on this page, we want to combine like terms to solve this equation, okay? Now, on here, you have 5x plus 6x, is equal to 66. Now notice something, okay? 
If I draw a line down the middle of this equation, you have the left side and you have the right side. Notice that I have values that contain a single x on the left side of the equation. Now, with that, okay, what I want to do is combine those, okay? And so combining like terms over here, I want you to write this. So combine like terms, okay, means this, that you can, um, you can combine terms with the same variable raised to the same power, okay? Um, we'll get more and more into this later, but uh, for right now, it'll be pretty easy. So combine terms of the same variable raised to the same power, okay? And one way to do that is to add the coefficients, efficients, and keep the variable. Okay, and so that's what we're doing. Uh, the coefficients, all right, this word here, okay, these are the numbers in front of the variable. Okay, and you're going to see that word a lot. All right, so in this case, what we want to do, all right, is combine our like terms here, 5x and 6x. Now, because they both contain an x, these are like terms. And what I want to do is add the numbers in front of my variable. Okay, so I'm going to take the 5 and the 6, add those together, which is going to give me 11, and then keep our variable 11x. And that's going to equal 66. Now, notice something. Notice how I didn't do any sort of opposite operation. That's because they're strictly on the left side of the equal sign, okay? And if that's the case, if they're on the same side of the equal sign, I don't need to do anything. I just need to add them together. Okay, now that I'm going to take my 11 here and move it across this line and move it to the other side of the equation, I need to do an opposite operation. Now, here what I'm doing is I'm multiplying 11 times x. Now, the opposite of multiplying by 11 would be dividing both sides by 11, okay? My 11 divided by 11, that divides out to 1. So we're simply left with x is equal to 66 over 11, which is going to be 6, okay? 66 divided by 11 is 6. So that's my answer, okay? Now let's check ourselves, okay? So let's check to see if we're right, all right? So I'm going to do 5 times 6 plus 6 times 6. Does that give me 66, Okay, so 5 times 6, it's going to give me 30, plus 6 times 6, which is 36, does that give me 66? So 30 plus 66 is 66, and that equals 66. That's true, therefore, that is my answer, okay? And that's what I've got. Okay, um, let's go to the next page. Okay, so um, what we want to do in this section is we want to take word problems, okay, and turn these situations into um, equations, okay? So let's read through this, okay? Mrs. Gardner needs to arrange 28 desks into rows on each side of her classroom with an aisle in the middle. There is room for four rows on the left side, but only three rows on the right. Okay, how many desks should be in each row on the right? So let's draw a picture, okay? Um, and let's do this pretty quickly. Let's put an aisle, okay? So an aisle. I think that's how you spell aisle. Is that how you spell aisle? Yeah, it sure is. Okay, uh, so you have your aisle, okay? And you have one two, three, four rows, okay, and then one, two, three. What we want to determine is how many desks are going to go in each row, okay? So what we want to do, um, and you can draw a picture, and you can kind of figure this out, um, but 
what we want to do is write an equation, okay? And let's do this. I'm going to put four rows, four desks in each row. Okay? Um, and what I have is this, okay? Um, when I write this out, okay, I want to let x equal the number of desks in each row, okay? Now, with that, okay, I have four rows, four rows, and I have three rows, okay? How many desks should go in each row? Now, I'm going to do 4x plus 3x. Now, remember, if I take the number of rows, okay, multiply it by the number of desks in each row, uh, same over here, and I add all of them together, I should get a total of 28 desks, okay? And that's how I wrote that. Now, I had to kind of draw a picture to see how this all worked, but let's go ahead and give this a shot, okay? So let's do this. Um, let's combine our like terms, okay? I have 4x plus 3x, okay? Both terms contain an x, so they're like terms. So I add the numbers out front. 4 plus 3 gives me 7. Keep your x and let that equal 28, okay? And we're going to divide by 7 on both sides, all right? And so I get that x is equal to 4, okay? So this means that you would have four desks in each row, okay? And that's what that means, all right? Um, how many desks should be in each row on the right, all right? Um, and so, and so, let's just verify that we found the right answer algebraically. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 4 times 4 plus 3 times 4. Does that give us 28? So 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 times 4, which is 12. Does that give us 28? Now, 16 plus 12, uh, 10 plus 10 is 20. 6 plus 2 is 20 is 8, so 20 plus 8 is 28 and 28 is equal to 28. That is true, so we have solved this correctly. Okay, and the other thing is, is you know, when you, when you look at this picture and you count the desks, and you go, okay, if I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28! Got it! Oh, it makes me feel good. It's amazing when that happens. Okay, so that's what we got. All right, so, you know, turning a, a, a problem like this into an equation is a skill that we want you guys to do. All right, all right, let's go ahead and talk about uh, two step equations. Okay, here. Now, um, on a two step equation, our goal, all right, and let's write this down our goal is to isolate our x value, isolate your variable. Okay, isolate your variable. Okay, now the, the interesting thing that when you solve equations is that you want, when you're starting to do your, 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 uh, your operations, your inverse operations, you kind of want to work backwards from your order of operations, okay, PEMDAS, okay, where you would do all those things in an order. When you're solving equations, you kind of work in the opposite order. So the first thing I'd want to do is I'd want to move over this minus 4. The opposite of subtracting 4 would be adding 4 to both sides, okay? And so here's what I get. I get 3.25x is equal to 15.5 plus 4. So 15.5 plus 4, that's going to give me 19.5, okay? Now that's my first step, okay? It's my first step. And what I want to do is then do a second step to solve this, okay? This is why we call it a two-step equation. So I have 3.25x is equal to 19.5. Now what I want to do, because I'm multiplying 3.25 by x, I'm going to divide both sides by 3.25. Divide by 3.25. Okay, these numbers divide out to 1. So then we get that x is equal to 19.5 divided by 3.25. Okay, and that's going to give us a value of 6, okay? So now what I want to do is check this, okay, with my original equation, all right? So if I check, all right, I'm going to do 3.25 times 6, and then minus 4, does that give me 15.5? All right, so 3.25 
times 6 gives me 19.5, okay, minus 4, and that should give me 15.5. So 19.5 minus 4 gives me 15.5, all right, and that's equal to 15.5. So this is true, therefore that's my answer, okay, and we've done that correctly, okay. All right, let's take a look at another um, problem here. Okay, uh, Morgan wants to buy a new smartphone that costs $172. She has already saved $70. She makes $8.50 per hour babysitting. How many more hours will Morgan have to babysit to earn the rest of the money? Okay, so this one isn't so bad. This one's a little bit easier to do, I think. Um, but we already have $70, okay? And if we add $8... 8.50 times x, that would give us 172. Now, what I want to do here is label x represents hours, okay? So we're trying to figure out how many hours we would have to work. So you have $70. How many more hours would we have to work at 8.50 an hour to give us a total of 172? So let's go in here and let's solve this, all right? So I'm going to first subtract my 70, isolate that value, all right? And so we're left with 8.50 times x is equal to 102. Okay. Now, because I'm multiplying both sides by 8.5, I want to divide both sides by 8.50. Divide by 8.50. These divide out, okay? And so x is going to equal 102 divided by 8.5 and that's going to give me x is equal to 12. So 12 hours that we would need to work. Now let's go ahead and just check our answer, okay? So let's check. All right, so if I take $70 plus 8.50 times 12, does that give us 172? Okay, so I'm going to do 8.5 times 12. So 8.5 times 12. Okay, uh, and that's going to give me 102. So I have 70 plus 102. Does that give me 172? Take 70, add it to 102. I get 172 equals 172. That is a true statement. Therefore, we have answered this correctly. Okay, and that's that. Okay, now on this one, we have multi-step equations. Okay, where we're going to have all these things that we got to do. Um, you know, to solve for x. Remember, the whole point of this is to isolate your x value. So what I want to do is I want to combine my like terms. That's going to be my first step here. Okay, I notice that I have two terms that have an x value. I'm just going to combine them. So I'm going to add the numbers out front, keep my variable. So I've got negative 3 plus 6, and that's going to give me 3x plus 4 is equal to 13. Okay, now, now I have a two-step equation. Okay, so I've gone from like, this is like a three-step equation. All right, now what I want to do is I want to move over my four. So because I'm adding four, the opposite of adding four is subtracting four from both sides. And we're going to get that 3x is equal to 9. We're going to divide both sides by 3, okay, and that's going to give me that x is equal to 3. Okay, now let's check. All right, and let's check with the original equation. We always check with the original equation. So I'm going to do negative 3 times 3 plus 6 times 3 plus 4. Does that give us 13? Okay, so let's multiply. So I've got negative 3 plus 3, or I'm sorry, negative 3 times 3 gives me uh, negative 9. 6 times 3 gives me positive 18, and then plus 4, and does this all give us 13? So negative 9 plus 18 when we combine those together, that's really like 18 minus 9, and that's going to give me 9. 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. 9 plus 4 does, in fact, give me 13, so 13 is equal to 13. That's a true statement. Therefore, this is my solution, okay? So hopefully, you know, this stuff is stuff that you have seen before. Um, if not, okay, we got to practice, all right? So uh, that's all I have for this video. Kind of a long one, but a good one. And we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye!